Please join me in God's show. Namo a m i d a b s Namo a n 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 a b s Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our regular Sunday service. Uh, there are more people joining us by Zoom than there are people here, but that's okay. Uh, welcome to those who have uh, joined us here in person, as well as to those on Zoom. Uh, we just finished our uh, Dharma School service, and the kids were all dressed up in their their Halloween costumes. I think. Uh, I believe we're supposed to have good weather for uh, Tuesday night, so they'll have uh, nice weather to go trick or treating. Um, so we'll begin this morning's service with a moment of silent meditation, followed by the recitation of the name of the Buddha or the Nembutsu. Oh, before I go any further, can everybody hear me okay on Zoom? Okay. Thank you. Please join me in God's show. Namah Nobs, Namah Nobs, Namah Nobs, Namah Nobs. Next, we'll be uh, reading together our pledge. Now, uh, oh, you know what? We should have handed that out. Uh, we have some copies of it. Yeah, there are. Yes. It's also on the screen. So we're going to read together our pledge. Um, for those who are here, you have it now in your uh, on hand as well. Okay. Our pledge: Breaking out of my shell, I shall carefully share a warm smile and speak gentle words, just like the kind Buddha. Not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance. I shall be open-minded and act accordingly, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. Not putting myself first, I shall share in the joy and sadness of others, just like the compassionate Buddha. Realizing the gift of life we have received, I shall live each day to its fullest, like the Buddha who continues to emancipate all. No man d o b s no man d o b s Next, we'll have the sutra chanting. Uh, we're going to be chanting the Jusege, which on in your red seiten, you'll find this on page uh, the, in, uh, the red seiten is on page 55 that we'll be chanting, and then afterwards we're going to be uh, reading the English translation 
which you'll find on page 117. Uh, for those that are on Zoom, and, and anybody here as well, if you wish, it's up on the uh, screen as well. No more dubs, no more dubs, no more dubs.
Again, now we're going to be actually chanting this in English, and you'll find that in page one, on page 117 of the Red Satan, page 117. Okay. No more no more no more no more no more Thank you. 
This morning, as we gather here for the service, it's hard to believe that uh, we're almost into November. The year end is coming up very quickly. Uh, today, uh, I asked actually Roy Sensei to give the Dharma talk, so we'll have a Dharma message given by Roy Sensei. Sensei Onigashimas. Please join me in Gasho, please. Namo Amida. Namo Amida. Namo Amida. Namo Amida. Namo Amida. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be able to say a few words this morning. Uh, uh, I'm going to begin my Dharma sharing with these words from the collected works of Shinran. And uh, what he has is uh, written a commentary on Vas Bandhu, the second patriarch of Pure Land Buddhism. And he's the second person on the extreme right. So if you could please put your hands together and I will read from the text. Vas Bandhu, author of the treatise took refuge in the unhindered light with the mind that is single. 
He teaches that by entrusting ourselves to the vow's power, we will reach the fulfilled land. To take refuge with the mind that is single in the Buddha of unhindered light filling the ten quarters is, in the words of Vasubandhu, author of the treatise, The Mind That Aspires to Attain Buddhahood. So with those words, I'd like to comment about uh, well, first of all, before I do comment on those words which I have just read, you know, how many of you like me, I turn on the radio, the TV, and guess what the news is about? It's about, we all know, the situation in the Middle East. And... Uh, Reflecting upon my visit to that area some years ago, uh, to the northern part of the Gaza Strip, and uh, visiting Jerusalem and Mount Masada and down into the Dead Sea, I tried to reflect on the suffering, the conditions that these people are undergoing today. I mean, when the situation was calm at that time, I, my wife and I thought, my goodness, how stressful the living conditions are. In the northern part of Gaza, you know, the Palestinians were hemmed off. Little villages, they were hemmed off. They had fences around them. And in order to move from one area to another, they had to have permission, and that was peaceful and calm at that time. But, but today, with the insurgence of the Hamas and the persecution of the people living there, it, it does hurt. It really does hurt. Um, you know, one can only think about the suffering that they're undergoing. And you know, we don't think that we're undergoing suffering. But indeed we are. We all are suffering, some form or another. I mean, look at the people in Lewiston, Maine. All of a sudden, 18 people are shot. I mean, yes, it's far away. It's hard for us to really even visualize, but we can feel the hearts of those people who are affected by them and their friends. It does hurt. It's suffering. The suffering around us. You know, um, let's just try and take our mind away from this, this suffering, these terrible experiences that people have, and, and look for something that is a bit more positive. And, you know, a month ago, it's almost like a travel holiday, <laughs> but a month ago we, we just returned from uh, a trip in the Mediterranean. And one of the uh, stop-offs for the ports that we visited was Santorini. And some of you have been there or heard about Santorini. You know, it's a beautiful island. It's a small, cratered island, but it's beautiful. And what you do is you get off the ship, and you get off the port, and then, you know, you have to climb almost 175 meters to the village of Fira, or Oya. There are two villages, Fira and Oya. And uh, so we got off the ship and looked at the... There are three ways of getting up there. One is by cable car, one is by donkey, and one is by foot. Fifteen years ago, we had been there before. And, you know, the same situation, but we... My physical condition was much better, so I just walked it. We just walked it despite the, the donkey dung along the 175-meter uh, elevation. Um, but this time, I just couldn't do it. So I thought, well, what are we going to do? So we took a donkey ride. And I, I want to show you the picture of the, of the donkey ride that we had. <laughs> it was really something. You, you, if you come up close and have a look at it, yeah, here they are. Here's both of us on a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, these donkeys, you know, you know how big they are. They're not that big. 
but you know, they were very, very strong. They're extremely strong. And uh, there are about maybe one attendant for about 12 donkeys. You know, it's the first time that Itoka and I got onto a donkey. Well, I mean, get up there and put my foot into the stirrup and climb over onto the saddle. And I mean, I tell you, that was quite an experience in itself. Um, but here you got on there. And you know, the donkey is not very steady. It's moving around, constantly moving. So we got on there and we took we got on the white one, which was the leader of the, of the group of about 10 donkeys. And mine was the second one, the black one. And you know, this donkey was so unsteady. It just wanted to kind of, it was so agitated. Maybe he didn't want me on his back. I don't know what it was. But uh, here he, uh, moving around, and I got on there, and I was quite unsteady. Uh, I was gripping on to the horn of the saddle, and then the guy said, okay, we're going to start. And so he's walking with us. There are about 10 donkeys. They were going up. You know, just imagine 175 meters, a cobblestone pathway, and, you know, it's going like this, like an S-turn. And I don't know how many S-turns the donkey had to make, but, you know, sometimes you will see the donkey, they're, they're trying to, especially mine, it was rushing to try and get ahead of the pack. You know, talk about <laughs> being an authoritarian. He wanted to, or she, I don't know, wanted to get to the head of the pack, and so here I'm shouting, slow down, and pulling on the, on the horn of the saddle, and uh, whether it was effective or not, I don't know. But it did settle down, and here we are climbing up there. And uh, so that was okay. About a 20-minute ride, we finally made it to the top. We finally made it to the top, and I thought, oh, my goodness, I can get off. So we did get off, and well, we wanted to kind of maybe have a bit of a time for relaxation and, and look down below us. So if you look at the picture very carefully, you'll see that it's quite a climb. And you can see a couple of ships down at, the, at port. And there we uh, had a cup of coffee and sitting in there and kind of, you know, recollecting some of the things that Yutoko experienced and I experienced. And that was fine. And at the end of it, I started to really think about this ride, this ride. And, and you know, you can put it into a Buddhist context. And you know how you can put it into a Buddhist context? Well, I don't know if you know the person by name Genza. He's a Myokoning. And a Myokoning, as you know, are reported to be uneducated, but they're very, very faithful. They're very humble, and their actions, not their words, make so much in terms of their belief in Jodo Shinshu Buddhism, the belief in the Buddha, the belief in the Onenbutsu. And, you know, I sat there with my espresso coffee, and I started thinking about Mio, uh, Genza. And Genza, uh, Turns out to be that his real name is Ashkaga Saburo. And uh, you know, he's one of the several uh, so-called Myokuni. You've heard of Saichi, you've heard of uh, Shoma, you've heard of Seikuro, who's one of my favorites. But, but anyway, uh, his birthplace was in Aoyacho Yamane in Totori Prefecture. Grand Sensei would know because his paternal grandfather was born in Totori. And you know, we had a chance to visit there as well. It's, it's right on the seaside, and it's a small prefecture. It's not big, and nothing really staggering to be excited about. But here, this person by the name of Asahiro um, Genku Saburo, uh, he lived there for years and for years. And he, he looked after his father. And his father was quite a Shinshu follower as well. Every, not every day, but perhaps on a regular basis, Genza would take this donkey 
and he would take it up the mountainside and he would cut the wood and this becomes firewood for the home and he would pile the firewood on the donkey and he did this on a regular basis well his father had said you know somebody you've got to listen to the Buddha you've got to listen to the Dharma and he said oh well okay but you know on an irregular and later on a regular basis for 15 years he listened to the Dharma and on this one situation he went up the mountain with his donkey his ox and he piled the wood on to the donkey and the donkey would take it down to their home suddenly Genza came across this and this is what he said it's it's interesting what he and and this is a quotation from one of the texts that I read suddenly I was made to realize the Buddha's mind what was it that brought about this realization? And his answer was, you know, the firewood is my karma. It's my karma that the ox is carrying. The ox is Amida. It is, he is the Buddha who is carrying my karma. He's the other power. I can't do it myself. He's the other power. He's the one that's carrying my karma. And he put his hands together and said, Namo Amidabutsu. You know, often people think that a teacher, a Zen Shiki, a Zen Chishiki, it's a, it's a word for a teacher. A teacher is one who is a person. But in this case, Genza says, my Zen Chishiki, my teacher, is my ox, is my donkey. And he revered the donkey so much that what he did was he added a room to his house for the donkey. And so, you know, I reflected on this. Here I am, a person of 150 pounds, on this donkey, this black donkey. And he's carrying my weight, my karma, up the 175-foot cliff just for me to enjoy the scenery and to enjoy the people around me. And I thought, you know what? That is really an experience that, I don't know, how can I forget it? How can I forget it? And it started off with just a simple donkey ride. But it ended with this understanding that we often overlook the Dharma that's around us. The Dharma is around us. But we take for granted, we don't realize it, we don't know. And so in a way, that's what I wanted to share with you. To me, it's a departure from the sadness that we hear about. It's a happy one. It's a real happy one for me. It's a positive experience. And to close off, this is what I want to say about uh, uh, what Vasubandhu, the second patriarch of Pure Land Buddhism, said. And I'm going to read again from the uh, collective works of Shinran. The mind that aspires to attain Buddhahood is a mind to save all sentient beings. The mind to save all sentient beings is true and real Shinjin, which is Amida's benefiting of others. Shinjin is a mind that is single. The mind that is single is a diamond-like mind. The diamond-like mind is a mind aspiring for enlightenment. This mind is itself other power. Thank you very much, everyone.
Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. In closing, I'm going to repeat the name of again, please. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Roy Sensei. It's uh, so nice for me to be able to ask Roy Sensei to give Dharma talks periodically. Um, I was actually at a concert out at, at the Abbotsford Center last night, and I didn't get in till late in, in the evening. So, uh, Roy Sensei asked earlier in the week, Roy Sensei, would you mind giving the English Dharma talk? And he said, I'd be happy to. So, thank you again, Sensei. Um, we'll uh, close this uh, uh, service with the singing of Shinshu Shuka. And uh, in your red seiten, it is on. Where is that? It's at the back. Yeah, yeah, it's at. Oh, do they not have it in here? Oh, they don't have it in here. Okay, I'll bring it up on the screen. I'm surprised they don't have it in here. Yeah, in the purple book, actually, it's on page uh, uh, 306. 306. Page 306 in the purple book. And for those of you at home, it's on the screen. And I'm just going to. Hopefully, this works. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this will conclude this morning's uh, service. Uh, thank you again, Roy Sensei, for the Dharma message. And just announcements, next week is our uh, November Shotsuki Monthly Memorial Service, and that will be from 10.30, and it will be a joint English and Japanese service. 
Um, and then uh, coming up in November on the 19th is the Eshini Day, and uh, Eshini Day is the wife of Shinran Shonin, founder of our, our school, and the Fujin Kai annually has a, a memorial service for Eshini as well as uh, Fujin Kai members. So that's on the 19th, um, and then on the 25th, which is a Saturday, we'll be having a fundraising chow men sale. So we'll need uh, volunteers, if you're able to come on out to help chop vegetables. Are you doing the vegetable chopping on the Friday or Saturday? Do you know? Friday, Friday, so we'll be... At one, okay. So chopping, what? No? Yes? Oh, okay. Nine o'clock Friday, Grant. Oh, nine o'clock. So the voice from the heavens spoke. <laughs> At nine o'clock on Friday, we'll be starting chopping vegetables. So if you have time and are able to help out, please come out and help. It will be a, a drive through chow mein pickup uh, fundraiser. So, uh, and that's the announcements for November. Have I missed anything? Uh, November 11th, there will actually be a Remembrance Day ceremony in Wisteria Place. So I will be uh, partaking of that. Um, there is also, of course, the Remembrance Day uh, ceremony out in Stanley Park. Uh, there's a Nikkei Cenotaph there uh, for the veterans of the various wars. And uh, many of the uh, Nikkei community actually go out to Stanley Park. For, so there's a service, it's a very nice service actually, um, but because we have Wisteria Place here now, I'm involved with the uh, Remembrance Day service here. So that's also on, uh, no, of course, November 11th, okay? So thank you all for attending and please enjoy yourselves and uh, uh, enjoy Halloween in a couple of days for those who are uh, handing out candies. Thank you. No one else. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Roy Sensei, for your Dharma talk.